the uh, healthcare provider, if they're not aware of the disease, the first thing they see is, oh, it's a black person, and oh, they just want drugs. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the main thing that's been going on for decades. Universal health care is something that is oftentimes celebrated around the world, but is this a system that treats everyone equally? Some Canadians are finding out that the quality of care can sometimes depend on the color of their skin. Stories about Ontario's health care system, like Serena Thompson's, have been heard before. A provincial report has documented the racialized experiences of sickle cell patients, a genetic condition that occurs in people of African, Arabic and Indian racial backgrounds. One of these stories reads in part, my brother was 33 years old when he went to the ED with a crisis. They saw a black male and told him he was looking for drugs, not having a crisis. That author continues to say the man was eventually sent home and was found dead the next day. Racism is systemic, and to believe that the healthcare system isn't like every other major mainstream system that is dealing with systemic racism is, is very naive. The Ontario government tells City News racial inequities in the healthcare sector are most often indirect, subtle, and systemic. But up to date data on discrimination isn't readily available in Canada. There is anecdotal evidence that members of Ontario's racialized communities sometimes face racism and discrimination when accessing healthcare. In studies and surveys, young women of color, particularly black women, say they've experienced racism when receiving care. And almost 85% of them reported things like being called racist names by healthcare providers, racial slurs, um, unwanted sexual um, conduct, um, even things like being charged more for services and when they checked with their white friends they had a different experience. We asked the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care if it collects race-based data. A spokesperson says that information is not yet systematically collected across Ontario. The ministry also told us that the province plans to start collecting race-based data. It is not clear yet if that will also include the health sector. That is a racial bias. You're not concerned about the health care of every individual. You just want to make general statements. Toronto is, however, leading the way in what is described to be a groundbreaking first in Canada with a project that measures patients' equality. In 2012, a group of 32 Toronto hospitals and clinics banded together to begin collecting patient demographic data to start tackling health equity across the system. Three reasons why data collection is important. To find out what the problem is, to look at trends of how things are going, to be able to advocate for more resources. Since 2013, the group has been asking clients to fill out this questionnaire about race, ethnicity and sexual orientation. It's a project led by Mount Sinai Hospital and supported by healthcare providers throughout the city. This data has already been proven useful to hospitals and clinics throughout the city. Ahead, I'll tell you how it's being used. I'll also tell you what the data says about the medical needs of particular minority groups here in the city. Canada's history of multiculturalism has um, made it not as responsive to naming race and racism. And as a result, Canada, I would say, lags behind even the U.S., around collecting race-based data and talking about the impact of racism in accessing health care. We've been talking about racial biases in Canada's health care system. There's been a real push from advocates to encourage governments to start collecting race-based data at medical facilities, but it's something the City of Toronto has already been doing. This initiative is saying if you're going to use the language of health equity, then we need to have evidence that speaks specifically to health disparities. Since 2012, more than two dozen hospitals and health centers in the city have banded together to tackle health equity across the system by collecting patient social demographic data, something that hasn't really been done at this level before. We felt that there was a real gap in data that um, speaks to measuring and or monitoring um, disparity in access, quality of care, how health outcomes for racialized folks, low-income folks in the city. As of 2017, over 435,000 clients have responded to the voluntary questionnaires and already health facilities say they're benefiting from the data. Parkdale Queen West Community Health Center, for instance, has learned more about cancer screenings at their clinic. 
where we see that um, low-income women, racialized women, um, our lower screening is then we target strategies. We develop targeted strategies to increase the screening rate in those populations. The Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care says race-based information is not yet collected province-wide, but there is research on Indigenous and racialized communities. Indigenous peoples are set to face some of the worst health prospects in the province, including prevalence of diabetes. While Black Canadians are disproportionately affected by HIV-AIDS, mental health issues, heart disease and strokes, that community along with South Asian groups also have the highest rates of diabetes. Women's Health and Women's Hands Community Health Center has also been collecting its own data for 25 years, saying on average, black women go see a doctor only when the effects of their chronic illnesses are in advanced stages. Nobody is ringing an alarm. No one's even informing the community of those prevalence rates. No one's even saying, let us redirect resources to look at what does this community need to address that health issue. There have been calls for federal and provincial governments to follow suit and collect race-based data to better understand gaps in the health care system and learn the experiences of racialized communities. Rolling all of that data up to the policy level is what's going to ensure that resources flow to the appropriate places. Robertson adds that racialized groups are also underrepresented in medical studies, so there's also a push for researchers to be more inclusive in their studies. For City News, I'm Faisal Amin.